all right welcome back everyone thank you guys for tuning in to another video here it's it's the wee hours of the morning it's super you, early so it looks like the evening yeah exactly so we hope you all have been doing well i just want to say we appreciate all of you and if you haven't yet please go jump over to our blog channel which we always link below this should be the gateway to that world yeah <laughs> all right this is episode 234 All right, so today we're going to do a video called Top 10 Culture Shocks Americans Will Have in Europe. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming, but it's not going <laughs> to. Okay. All right, let's see. We could talk all day about why Europe is one of the best places to travel, but that doesn't mean you won't encounter any challenges on your trip. From unexpected fees to funky toilets, there are plenty of things that can throw you for a loop in Europe, especially if it's your first time visiting. Today we'll be talking about 10 culture shocks Americans will have in Europe, and more importantly, how to deal with them. Hey guys, it's Caitlin here from How to Europe. In the eight years I've been living abroad, most of that time in Paris, I've had my fair share of culture shock while learning to adapt to the European style of life. So today I'll be sharing some of the things that I've learned to deal with so that they're a little less scary for you when you're visiting. Yeah. Number 10, lack of modern amenities. There's a long list of American comforts that are pretty rare in Europe, but nice. what you sacrifice in comfort, you gain in charm. Giant wheeled suitcases are no match for ancient streets. They might even be tough on your ankles that are used to smooth sidewalks. Elevators are luxurious in old buildings, and even when you have one, it's probably going to be tiny. Yet another reason to pack light or even opt for a backpack instead of a suitcase. Yeah, that makes sense. Number nine, no air conditioning. Along the same lines, air conditioning is one of those things. I mean, I could see this, but obviously because we stayed in hotels and stuff, they have it. But I'm sure in the apartments, it's different. I think we got really lucky because we've also gone during the time of the years where the weather was nice. Well, Italy, it was pretty hot. Was it? it Italy was very hot. I don't remember it being that hot. It was hot, but we had AC in the hotel. Babe, remember? I don't remember ever feeling like... We oh, took a bus so to. I can't wait to get in the AC. We so we took the trip from Rome to down to Sorrento, and on that like Metro? local kind of like train bus type thing oh, that we yeah, had to sorry. take, it was like, so hot in there. Yeah, that makes sense. But I'm talking about outside. It it's because it was very hot outside, but they didn't have AC in the thing, so it was I like. I don't remember being that hot. I remember it was really hot, and Pompeii it was scorching hot. I don't remember being that hot. How do you, I don't care. Okay. I don't and know I how feel you don't like remember I that. remember when I'm that uncomfortable. It was hot. Maybe, yeah. I remember your brother mentioned it yesterday. Oh, really? That, yeah, he, that he remembers it being really hot. You guys are little bitches. <laughs> it is extremely rare in Europe. So think of it as a special treat when I you get it. AC. Without air, you'll probably be opening the window. Something that drives me nuts about Europe is that screens are non-existent. You'll learn to cope yeah, with flies so and funny. mosquitoes coming and going, or just get really good at killing them. Number eight, mysterious toilets. There's a lot to say revolving around toilets in Europe, but the first thing that might be surprising to you is that you often have to pay to use public toilets. They'll usually cost around a euro, so be sure to have coins on you. You'll also see a lot of missing toilet seats around Europe. This is something that I still don't really understand, but I think people do it so they can clean them more easily if it's like a public bathroom. You'll also see Turkish toilets not only in Turkey, wow. but in other European countries. I see them from time to time in Paris. You'll see toilets with like two flush modes. You'll also see bidets sometimes in places that you stay in. Um, maybe this is something that you'll learn to enjoy. Number seven, less convenience. Of course, every country yeah, is different, fun. but in general, life moves at a slower pace in Europe than in the US. Spain is famous for their siestas, yeah. but they're not alone. Europeans tend to take more time to enjoy their lunch breaks, and shops typically close earlier. Many places like? will even be closed on that, Sundays. I mean, that seems pretty like cool. That like you know, like you kind of are yeah. able to run your own hours at your shop. Obviously, you want to be open to make money, but it's like yeah, I know here everyone 
it cycles through breaks, so they're never closed. Yeah. yeah. Or they have like standard hours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was something to get used to, but it wasn't um, that big of a deal. I think we just planned around it. That's why. Exactly. But living like that every day, I feel like it would take a minute to get used to. That moment where like you're like, oh, I need this so bad. And it's that right, time where like, they're on a yeah. break. Yeah. Or Mondays. Number six, walk till you drop. Yeah. You're probably going true. to feel exhausted in Europe between jet lag and okay. sightseeing. You'll be doing a lot of things on foot. So you're going to earn all of that tasty food you get to eat. But if you want to try to get in shape beforehand, you'll feel a lot less tired when you're traveling. And speaking of walking, try to bring some good shoes, even if you think you'll look like a dork. Somehow Europeans can walk all day in fashionable shoes and clothes. My favorite sandals for walking around are Chacos, which my Parisian other half dreams of setting on fire. But this is a hill I'm willing to die on because they're very comfortable. Oh Number gosh, five, paying for water. Shoes. Complimentary water with ice is commonplace in the US, but not in Europe. Ordering water and then realizing you have to pay for it because it came in a bottle can be a shock to Americans, so here's what you need to know. If you're at a touristy restaurant, to they'll almost always give well, you a bottle. We have to pay for it in Italy, right? A lot? I, it, both, yeah. In Spain too? Yeah. I don't remember. If it was sparkling, you paid. If it was tap, you didn't. Yeah. That was it. But bottle, so they can upcharge you, but it can also be a cultural thing. Some Europeans just prefer to have better tasting water when they're out eating good food. This also depends on the country. In France, it's totally normal to ask for un calaf d'eau, but in Spain, they'll often say no. So if you don't want to pay, just look up how to order tap water in the local language as it'll be harder for them to say no to you. Number four, restaurant cover charges. In Europe, being able to sit down and eat or drink is seen as a luxury. So if you're standing at the counter, it'll often be cheaper. Italy has something called coperto, yeah, where either. they'll charge a few euros per person as a cover charge oh, when I eating do. at a restaurant. This. this isn't a scam or a tip. The idea is that it covers all the things necessary for your meal, the cutlery, plates, tablecloth, and oh, bread wow. may or may not even be included in that. So if bread comes to your table, you can ask if it's included. Number three, customer service. Servers in Europe are not going to fawn over you like they do in the US, and they're not trying to be mean, it's really just a cultural thing. Tipping isn't a big thing in Europe like it is in the States, but you should do your research beforehand because this varies from country to country. Another thing that can be kind of a shock is that you have to chase down the bill. In Europe, getting the bill brought to you is seen as rude. It's like an invitation. We've talked about this many yeah. times. We just did recently too yeah. in one of the videos, yeah. Um, that was funny. Yeah. With my brother. I know. He was so shocked that they were not coming for like over 30 minutes to check on us. To leave rather than a convenience. So you have to track it down. So this is another good word to look up. Like in France, you would ask for la décision. Number two, smoking. I think it's safe to say that most Americans probably grew up learning that cigarettes are basically the equivalent of the devil, so it can be quite a shock to come to Europe and have to endure smoking on cafe terraces, in the street, or even wafting into your open window. If you sit outside and are offended by smoking, unfortunately, you're kind of out of luck. Number one, being disliked. I feel like that's like the one thing we've done right out here is make smoke zones. That's true, yeah. Because you could fight me all day and night about asthma and how it could affect it or not. There's so many people who say, no, it's it's a scam. It doesn't bother. I'm telling you, I start wheezing the second I smell. Yeah, in Italy, she had a... We already talked about it, but in Italy, she had like a, a really bad asthma attack yeah. because of the smoke. And the doctor tried to tell me, oh, it's not because of that. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure it is because I know how my body reacts when I inhale secondhand smoke. And it was just so much. Like, I, there was, like, no break from it. Yeah. I got used to it personally, but, like, my body was just, like, f not happy. And yeah. I was fighting it. I was, like, trying to tell myself I was fine when I wasn't <laughs> until the day before we left. And I was like, I should probably see a doctor. 
In the US, we're used to thinking that we're the best at everything, but in the time I've lived in Europe, I've heard a lot of complaints about American tourists. That we're loud, we're disrespectful, attention-seeking, the list goes on. I think we're probably the only ones constantly of getting course. in trouble for... That that's looked like it was those fucking Paul, Paul brothers, brothers that yeah. were in Europe fucking making... making and being annoying. Yeah. yeah. They're that's, obnoxious. That's probably how they started in show. Huh? I think one of them started on Disney Channel, but essentially, yeah, they were on YouTube making... They're past my time on, like, they, they're not... I'm not the demo for their... Yeah, I mean, I'm not either, yeah. yeah. Jumping in the Venice canals. Check out my other video, Italy's Bad Tourist Problem, if you want to see some of our finest fellow Americans making us all look dumb. <laughs> So try to remember, when you're in Europe, be humble and respectful so that we can wow, try to improve great. our image in the future. Hopefully hearing about these common culture shocks beforehand will make you more understanding when you encounter them in Europe. Try to see it as an eye-opening experience rather than an inconvenience. And don't forget, obviously the good things outweigh the bad. Stick around next week and we'll be talking about all the things that you'll fall in love with when you visit Europe. Thanks again for watching How to Europe, and we'll see you next time. Cool. We see junk food the way Americans see cigarettes. That's fair. I don't think junk food blows in your face, but okay. No, I don't know. I, I get like the... Uh, the poison aspect of that yeah but at the same time you're not affecting i don't think other somebody people. else eating like shit is affecting your immediate experience health. <laughs> yeah but i could see what you mean like how it was anyway sorry i was reading some of the comments on this video typical american telling her point of view not really a video i'd recommend to someone <laughs> welcome to youtube thanks for watching <laughs> people are so unhinged on social media i know in the last video we did with the with the the, the com comedian guy and he was doing the, the restaurants or whatever a lot of you liked it which is cool we liked Wait, that one too it was one? funny the one that we did the funny one that we just did i don't remember oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, there's just state. one comment at the end he's like this is probably the worst video <laughs> and i'm just like okay like thanks <laughs> <laughs> then why are you watching it? <laughs> anyway all right um Thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe, guys. And also jump some, over to our Give me channel. some, like, actual juicy ones, okay? Oh, like Hello. recommendations? Or, no, I meant for... How about this? If you've come to America, I want to know if you've had any culture shocks out here. I'm sure you have, but yeah. That you've experienced, not saw in, like, an American movie. Yeah, let us know. Because I, I want to know. All right, well, that was an interesting one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.